All right, so I want to talk about hating unrighteousness. And how do we hate unrighteousness? And where does hate come in? Isn't that like a, a word that, that would go against our Christian belief system to hate something? Is it wrong to hate something? What does hate mean? And unrighteousness, what is unrighteousness? And how do we get convicted about what unrighteousness is? in our lives. So I can give you an example, like many of us, we work and we have family. And normally there are people at work that are unrighteous, that say things that make us sick to our stomachs or want to cringe. Or we have family members that maybe have substance abuse problems, alcohol problems, which is really prevalent um, here in America. and. So like, like you go to a family get-together, you're going to have those that just drink shot after shot and everything. So I decided to look up the word hate to try to understand like what hate is and where it's okay that we hate and how do we hate. So bear with me. There's a lot of scriptures here, and I'll try not to make it too long. I'm going to read off some scriptures, and then I'm going to, just to give you the hate aspect of what God says about it in His Word, okay? So Proverbs 8.13 says, The fear of the Lord, I'm going to say that again, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverted mouth I hate. And in Hebrew, in the Old Testament, it's shane. It is to hate personally, an enemy, foe, be hateful, odious. And so, interesting enough, all of the words hate that are translated into English from the Hebrew is this hate, okay? Is this meaning. And it doesn't have any other meanings to it. Um, I'm going to go on. Psalm 97.10. He says to hate evil, you who love the Lord. Who's he talking to? Us. Who preserves the soul of his godly ones. He delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Amos 5.15. Hate evil. Love good. And establish justice in the gate. Perhaps the Lord, God of hosts, may be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. All right, so Psalm 119, 104. From your precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Proverbs 13, 5 says, A righteous man hates falsehood, but a wicked man asks disgustingly and shamefully. It's telling us the truth here. It's telling us what's real. Psalm 45, 7. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of joy above your fellows. Now isn't that true? We don't get tied up into sin because sin destroys. It not only destroys our soul in time, but it destroys our very lives in the moment. You think of those alcoholics, the drug abusers, um, that's sin. When they go to the extreme, that's sin, right? They lose their homes, their families, their jobs. They lose everything. And they, they go crazy inside. But God has given us the oil of joy because we love righteousness and hated wickedness. And Psalm 26, 5 says, I hate the assembly of evildoers. Right? Like going to parties where everyone gets drunk all the time. And God, who knows? You know, we know. Like, what? it's getting worse at those parties than what it used to be. Like when I was in high school, you know, or college. <laughs> it's a lot worse. And I will not sit with the wicked. So Proverbs 24, 9 says, the devising of folly is sin, and the scoffer is an abomination to men. 
so in Ezekiel says now this is interesting 35 6 therefore as I live declares the Lord God I will give you over to bloodshed and bloodshed will pursue you since you have not hated bloodshed therefore bloodshed will pursue you so think about abortion huh we don't hate the bloodshed it's pursuing it's pursuing them and you know I know there are many Christians out there who had an abortion or who were deceived and who um, maybe were was not a Christian when they had an abortion but and I know you know you go to a church there's going to be women in there that have had abortions it's so prevalent in this country in America and increasing in the rest of the world so but um, I've spoken to many women who have had abortion and that violence has followed them. The violence of abortion has followed them in their lives. And it takes them years to get over this spirit of violence that had been induced into their lives. It's just horrible to watch, but it's the truth. Now here in Romans, but to the New Testament, 12, 9, he's Paul says, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Now, if you think about this, um, people can look at us as if we're abominable, right? Because we are pointing the way to justice. In Proverbs 29 27 it says the unjust man is abominable to the righteous and he who is upright is in the way is abominable to the wicked and that's the truth isn't it so then but good and evil don't change it is us that changes good and evil stays the same way right so we can cling to the things because we desire them or we can reject things intensely because we don't desire them, right? But it's those things that are still good and evil. It's us that, ch that changes. So there is good and there is evil. So what is good and evil? Verse 2 in Romans 12 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Now I'm going to try to pronounce the Greek meaning of hate. <laughs> and I do not have it like written phonetically here. So, okay, so a post, which reminds me it's like opposite, apostasy, right? But a post Guntins. Okay, I'll spell it. A P O S T U N G O U N T E S. It means to abhor. Then there's kolominoi, which means to hold fast, right? In the Greek. So we have abhor is to loathe, to be distrusted with. And um, hold fast, right? Kolomononi is to embrace it, to love it. And that kolomonoi is the same word used for sexual union in 1 Corinthians 6.16, 6, which I thought was really interesting, right? To hold fast, right? To embrace it, to love it. So choosing for us, choosing not to drink or go to those parties is not enough. Why? So let's say, now I'm going to kind of try to get practical here. Let's say you are trying to stop drinking. Okay? You can choose to not drink. But it's a struggle. Why is it not enough? Why is there such a high failure rate in alcohol abuse? Because it is a deep inner moral transformation that has to happen inside of us. So if we look back up 
to Romans 12 9 it says let love be without hypocrisy so remember the word hypocrisy Paul does not say to avoid evil okay but he says abhor what is evil to hate evil okay so don't just choose good don't just choose to quit drinking for example but embrace the good embrace the fact your deep inner moral transformation to quit drinking so think about it Paul is not saying that we only choose good but to embrace it to love it and not only choose evil but that we hate it we abhor it that which is born in the Spirit loves the things of the Spirit in John 3 3 7 Romans 8 7 and for 1 Corinthians 2 14 through 16 we have been purchased by the blood of Christ through the covenant and what he said is I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you in Ezekiel 36 26 when Christ gives us a new heart then we begin to see the world the way he sees it and feel it the way that he feels it there is that daily transformation I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here so in the beginning of the verse and I'm going back now to Romans 12 9 let love be without hypocrisy absorb abhor what is evil cling to what is good right it says let love be without hypocrisy that's genuine be genuine I take it as loving to abhor the evil and embrace the good evil is bad for people period good is good for people period and not the other way around we don't decide what is good or bad for people and then define love so if you remember good is good and bad is bad but we don't decide what's what and then define love it is God that defines what is good and bad for people okay so moving on to 1 John 5 2 says by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments God's loving people keep his commandments right they are the expression of the objective good and are the expressions of the objective evil again evil is bad for people and good is good for people as what you know you heard me read at the beginning in Proverbs and Psalms and stuff so what is our good Christ is our good he is infinitely good and good for us he alone is good genuine love must hate so I hope you stay with me here to abhor is to inwardly reject what is the evil before us it is intense and it is through that love that we feel the hate for the evil you get what I'm saying evil dishonors God and one cannot claim to love God while coddling with evil so don't think that it is unloving to others to hate abhor the evil and the fact that you abhor the evil you are letting others know what is good for them that is love so in that letting them know what is good for them that is love if you do things to yourself that causes damage to yourself then you sin not against your, just yourself but also to others 
You are robbing them of what God made you to give to them. Love others. Must You must hate evil because it hurts them directly, and evil hurts you directly. It hides behind the beauty of Jesus Christ. So in the end, it's okay to inwardly hate and abhor evil. In doing so, you are abiding in Christ. It means that you are transforming. Now take all that and move it on and teach this love to your children. Okay, so they will know the way that they should go in these evil times. I hope this was encouraging. God bless you. Shalom. Thank you.